How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Ryan. Now, if you watched yesterday's game, you know two things. There's a big fire going on in Canada. Another thing is that the Yankees kind of suck without Aaron Judge, and I think we already knew that. And Aaron Judge, my friends, sprained, big toe, ligaments, damaged, and it seems like he's going to be out for a couple of weeks. He's heading to the IL, so at the very least, it's going to be 10 days. Um, But it could be a couple of weeks. And without Aaron Judge, this team is a shell of itself. And ultimately, we need other people to step up. So we want to kind of discuss the loss, who needs to elevate their game in his absence. And, you know, what can the Yankees do to help supplement this? And you really can't do much. He's arguably the best player in baseball, arguably the best player on the planet Earth. And replacing him, you can't even combine three players and get his level of production. Um, You know, that's just the unfortunate reality of having someone that talented is that when they get hurt, you see a significant drop-off in overall efficiency. And the White Sox, they're not that good. Giolito, he's a fine pitcher, but he historically has performed poorly against the Yankees, and they went six scoreless innings against him um, until, you know, an error from IKF in the outfield, which is simply unacceptable. Uh, Obviously, the White Sox kind of gifted us a chance to get back in the game there, and we, we blew it. Ultimately, we couldn't do enough to, to drive runs in. But Ryan, you know, before we dive into the loss of Aaron Judge, what this means for the offense and who needs to step up, how do you do today, my friend? Well, I'm doing all right. Uh, you know, going to the game yesterday looked like it was a post-apocalyptic, uh, post-apocalyptic society uh, with all the smoke there. But, um, you know, the, the thing with the Yankees right now is now you have to survive without Aaron Judge. Now, I get upset when people say, like, if the Yankees, you know, if the Yankees didn't have Aaron Judge, they wouldn't be X, Y, and Z. Because... Aaron Judge is inked to a nine-year deal. Aaron Judge is on the New York Yankees. Um, but I will say that when Aaron Judge isn't playing, when Aaron Judge is, if anything happens to Aaron Judge, this team isn't very good, right? Um, you know, and does that mean the Yankees as a whole are bad? No. Uh, but does that mean that the Yankees, there are some flaws in their roster in that sense? Yeah. You know, um, you know, one of the big things that I have an issue with when it comes to this team is more so the offensive depth. Um, you know, now, look, Willie Calhoun, IKF, they had a really good run in the month of May. Are they historically good hitters? No. So can you expect that to carry out over into the month of June? The answer to that is also no. So, you know, it's one of those things where it's like you're relying on guys who have, historically speaking, never really been great hitters to try to be good hitters while Aaron Judge is out. Now, sometimes that works out for you, but most times it doesn't. And if it doesn't work out for the Yankees, you're going to fall in the standings. The Blue Jays are two games back of the Yankees in the loss column for as much as, you know, the Red Sox have kind of been up and down all year. They're three, They're 31 and 30, so I believe they are four games back in the loss column of the Yankees. All it takes is two bad weeks and you're back in last place. So um, you, you can't afford to lose Aaron Judge to injuries, right? So so it's one of those situations as well. And then number two, you know, it pisses me off that Judge got hurt in the first place, not because Judge didn't try hard to run into the wall. Aaron Judge made the right baseball play because Aaron Judge is the captain of this team and Aaron Judge plays with, you know, his heart in his sleeve. He plays all out. He goes all out every single time. I just don't understand why they threw a fastball at J.D. Martinez. I, that ball should never been put in play. Should have been a slider. Uh, sometimes they just overcomplicate pitch calling. You can throw a slider down the way. You can go out and get a swing and a miss. Aaron Judge never has to crash into that wall. We can blame on the concrete. We can blame on the, the bullpen door, whatever we want. But if you throw a fastball to J.D. Martinez, you're asking for trouble. And that's what the Yankees did on two strikes. So, you know, it's little mistakes like that. It's it's the small little things. Those are mistakes the Rays aren't making right now. Those are mistakes the Astros haven't made in a month. Those are the mistakes the Rangers aren't making right now. Um, those are mistakes that, you know, really good teams don't routinely make, right? So if you're routinely making a lot of mistakes, um, you're going to get punished for that. So, um, you know, we can dive into, oh, they didn't make this move, they didn't make that move. You know, your big free agent signing is on the shelf right now, and we don't know when he's coming back, right? He's facing live hitters soon, but we don't know when he's coming back. Um, you know, you make a big trade piece for a guy like, um, you know, for a guy like Josh Donaldson. He's hitting well now, but, you know, if he doesn't keep that up, that's a dud of a trade, and it's been a dud of a trade so far. Um, you call it Volpe. He hasn't played so well to start the year. Um, it's it's getting concerning offensively. Do I think he's going to be a bust? No, I don't, I don't think, you know, three months of baseball can determine that. Um, but when you rely on a rookie shortstop, the rest of your team has to be pretty good around him, and that's not really what it is right now. So it's more so the flaws of the Yankees roster kind of always consistently show themselves at some point during the season. Whether that's bad luck or not, we can you know chalk it up to whatever we want to chalk it up to, but when they continue to come up and when they continue to show their face – this is what's going to happen. So, you know, is anyone going to start selling stock of the Yankees? This team won't make the postseason. This team stinks, whatever. No. I mean, that's, again, reactionary. Um, but are we going to sit here and say that this team's in a good position right now without Aaron Judge for the next two weeks? Absolutely not. Now, thankfully, they have games against Oakland coming up at some point in, in, in June. They handled the Mariners well. They'll be playing them again. Uh, but they have a, a, se- a series with the Red Sox coming up. You know, the Red Sox can really 
put themselves right back in the playoff race if they take two out of three or if god forbid they sweep you right and you know before people say well they're the last place red sox right now um the yankees have gotten the yankees just got beat by the white Sox yesterday the white Sox stink you should never lose to the white Sox. i'm sorry that team is a team you shouldn't lose to right there are 10 games on the 500 in the american league central i i think white Sox fans would agree with me here that team's an embarrassment right so the yankees losing to that team reflects more poorly on the yankees than it does on the white Sox. the white Sox were to lose to the yankees so you know i and, and i just want to ask you this question kind of going forward here you know if the offense is going to be playing like this every day i don't care who's on the mound i don't care who's coming back pitching wise i don't care who's going to take the ball you're not going to have a great chance to win clark schmidt wasn't great clark schmidt was okay but the bullpen was perfect right and the yankees had no shot really it felt like all game so you know you hold the team to three runs you should win that game right um so i, I guess the question i'm gonna ask you going uh, here is you know what can you expect from this offense like who's the guy that's got to step up because someone's got to or else this team's not going anywhere look someone's got to step up of course um now i think that there are two players in my mind that really need to elevate their game right one of them is Giancarlo stanton right he's the only guy that can replicate the type of power that Aaron Judge has. And we know he's an elite hitter at the top of his game. Didn't really have a great game yesterday. They moved him up to the number two spot, which I want to ask you following up. Do you think that's the right place to put him? They had Josh Donaldson in number four, and he's the other guy that needs to step up. Donaldson's been pretty solid since returning from that hamstring injury. And we need to see him continue to hit for power, get on base, do all the things you want to see from a player that has multiple top five MVP rankings. And, um, you know, he's definitely one of the better players on this team in terms of historical production. So Stanton, Josh Donaldson, those are the two guys I'm looking at to really elevate their game because they are the ones that have the most experience. Those are the ones that have been successful in the past. I'm not going to ask Anthony Volpe to elevate his game and perform like Aaron Judge. I'm not going to ask Jose Trevino to do that. I'm not going to ask anybody else. I'm not going to ask Willie freaking Calhoun. It's got to be Donaldson, and it's got to be Stanton because Glaber Torres, love the guy. He's been playing well. He's had a couple of inconsistent games lately. Um, but, you know, we know what Glaber Torres is. He's inconsistent. Um, but he, when he comes, he can, he can get on base. He can, hit, he can get those opposite field homers. You know, he does those things pretty frequently. Um, but Donaldson and Stanton, those two guys, if they're on, if they're hitting well, this offense is going to get a, a big jolt. But the really concern for me is the bottom half of this batting order. They're really bad, dude. Like, <laughs> the bottom half of this batting order, I don't have any faith in, right? Volpe has been, I hate to say, really bad offensively so far. Are they going to keep giving him a leash? Absolutely. Do I agree with it? Yes. I mean, they're, they committed to Anthony Volpe. You've got to ride this out. You've got to give him his... Uh, as much opportunity as possible because he is the future, obviously, um, at shortstop or whatever infield spot they see him fit. Um, but everybody else, not so good. I mean, Bowers has had his moments. He has individual games where he stands out, and then he goes a couple games not doing much. IKF has crashed back down to earth after a good two weeks. I just don't have any faith in the bottom half of this order. Um, but in my opinion, Donaldson, Stanton, those two guys, they got to elevate their game because those are the players that have the power and the experience uh, to do so. What do you think about that? Yeah, so you know that middle third, that middle three in Stanton, Rizzo, and Donaldson are obviously going to be huge. You know, Glaber's the leadoff guy now, so um, you know you need him to get on base more frequently. Um, that top four, obviously, you kind of expect to get some sort of offense from. You know, whether it's you know a, you know four runs, you know five runs, whatever it may be, you expect something, right? One run, two, run, you just expect something from them. Um, but as you mentioned, the bottom of that lineup is it's brutal, right? Um, you know, Anthony Volpe has been brutal offensively um he's making really bad swing decisions i don't know how no one in that locker room or that clubhouse or no one in the organization just standing there and telling him dude swing less the dude's swinging for whatever reason he's swinging more than he was to start the year that's not typically how progress goes you start swinging less as the season goes if you're a rookie and you, you start off a little more aggressive than you should be and you cut it down he made progression in april to the beginning of may and, and for some reason he Start swinging more. I don't know if they don't notice it. I don't know if he doesn't notice it. I don't know if he's in his own head. I don't know what's going on there. Um, I will say this, you know, when you market the guy, when you put the guy out there as, you know, just, you know, the next Jeter that he's, you know, and that wasn't just us saying this. They Look, they had coaches referencing him as like a Jeter Mattingly type yips yips and stuff like that right like not saying it can't happen it's baseball it's a very tough game but if it is happening did you misevaluate maybe where he was at mentally in terms of mental preparation for the major leagues maybe they did um and, and i guess kind of my big thing here is you know the yankees are in a weird spot because they're trying to win a world series and they're also trying to develop their young guys right so you know oswald peraza if we took away the names oswald peraza would deserve to be over here over anthony volpe at this point in time 
But the problem with that is obviously you do send him down. Do you do that and, and try to get him to rework his game or whatever it may be? Um, that's a tough call, right? And if Donaldson keeps playing well, if Glaber is doing all right, like how are you going to justify getting rid of those two before you get rid of Volpe uh, or get rid of? I'm not saying get rid of Volpe like trade him. I just mean like send him down. Um, but you know you're kind of in a tough spot there, right? And I think you know especially with Judge out. They're, they're going to have to be either they're going to step up and, you know, the Yankees are going to play well and we don't have to have these tough conversations, which would be really nice to do. Um, or they're going to play poorly and we're going to have to have some really difficult conversations about the roles of a lot of guys on this team. Does getting sent down end your career? No. You can get sent down, you can come back up, you could be a new player. That's There are plenty of players who have been sent down uh, after being called up and they've excelled. There are plenty of guys who have been unwatchable to start their careers and have excelled uh, in their major league careers. But, um, you know, right now, again, th- just the way that the team is built right now, it relies heavily on Aaron Judge. They had a lot of misses with a lot of their big free agent signings and a lot of their big trades. And and this is the downside of that. You know, yes, they have a lot of money. They, they generate a lot of revenue. They can, they can you know, kind of afford uh, to stomach a couple of those mistakes. Um, but, you know, you can only do it for so long, right? So you kind of have to just hope and pray that, as you mentioned, that bottom of the lineup, IKF, Calhoun, Bowers, that they just kind of have those moments or Trevino can just have a couple of moments, just have a couple of good weeks. And for the rest of the year, they don't have to do very well. Uh, and that can change the course of the entire season. But you're asking for a, a lot. You're asking a lot of guys who have historically speaking not given you a lot. So um, I, I guess that's my big concern is just that they're not in a spot right now um, to compete, really, in terms of like going out there and scoring a lot of runs. And I don't I, I don't like being in a situation like that. I don't like this line of being in a situation like that. And I don't like that we're routinely in a situation like that. A month ago, we were in this same spot. Back in early May, late April, we were in the exact same spot. No Bader, no Judge, no Stanton, no offense. The Yankees were abysmal to watch. So, yeah, you know, the bottom of the lineup right now is not giving you a lot. You know, you mentioned you don't want to ask too much of Volpe, but at some point you're going to have to ask something from Volpe, right? And, and the problem right now is that the Yankees are in a World Series, you know, kind of mode. They want to win the World Series, but at the same time you want to develop Volpe and Peraza. And if we're looking at this from a competitive standpoint, Peraza, and we took the names off the players, we looked at the production, we looked at where they were at, Peraza would, he, he deserves a shortstop job right now. Like, that's that's what that's what the numbers would say, right? Now, is that am I saying that that's what they should do? No, I don't know what they should do. That's a decision that I'm very fortunate to not have to make. Um, but at some point, if the Yankees start scuffling, um, you're going to have to make a tough choice. I don't want the Yankees to have to make tough decisions. I, I want that they are able to get through these next two weeks without Aaron Judge or however long it may be. They'll hit well or whatever happens, you know, and, and they're able to figure it out. But someone's got to sit down and talk to Anthony Volpe and say, dude, stop swinging so much. His strength was that he walked a lot. I, I don't know who or where or what, what, but what came upon him to think to swing more, but stop doing that, please. Um, Take pitches. I'm okay if Anthony Volpe says for the next week to work on my plate discipline, I'm going to not swing until I get a strike or two strikes. I would be okay with that. More than okay with that. Batters are overwhelmingly at an advantage when they don't swing. Why is that? Because it's really hard to throw strikes. So knowing that, go out there and and, and overly emphasize the point that you're going to be very patient. If you're going to, I would rather Anthony Volpe strike out looking than, than chase a slider down in the dirt on a three, one count where he could have walked and kept the ending alive. Right. Um, I think there's too much of a stigma around taking a called strike three. It's a strikeout. A strikeout is a strikeout. You swing and miss, you call, you take it for strike three. It's a, it's a strikeout. I don't care about the, Oh, but he went down fighting. Cool. He's walking back to the dugout, left, right, left, right to the dugout. I, I don't care how he goes back to the dugout. I just care that the process is good. I just care that he's out there making good swing decisions and good swing decisions typically speaking when you're struggling means just swing less um and and then you're looking at ikf bowers and calhoun right you get one of those guys to just give you something that they usually don't give you for two weeks and you're probably going to be okay um you just need someone to step up as you mentioned obviously the main guys need to step up but um you need some you need the bottom line to not be atrocious i mean you once you get past glaber uh stanton rizzo donaldson it's volpe IKF, Bowers, Calhoun, Trevino, occasionally Cabrera or Higashioka. These guys can't hit. Like, th- these guys cannot hit the baseball, right? Bowers, I think, has upside. He's hit well to start the year. Um, and, and so I'm going to kind of just 
remove him a little bit from that group. Um, but the other guys really can't hit the baseball very well. So we're, we're, we're kind of looking at a group of guys where there are a lot of, you know, league average to well below league average hitters at best. Um, you know, that reflects poorly on the Yankees, that that's what they're relying upon, that that's their immediate depth. Again, we talked about this before the season. Could Austin Wells come up and be a corner outfield guy? Why the hell is he in double A? Um, for what reason? There's no reason, right? If you're trying to develop him as a catcher, again, is there anyone I would rather Austin Wells learn from than Jose Trevino and Kyle Gashioka on how to handle a major league pitching staff? Let him let him work. Let him learn from the catchers. Let him learn from Tanner Swanson, who's done an excellent job with catchers in the system. Let let, let him work with that guy. Why, why does he have to stay in Double A in Somerset? Look, uh, the, he's he's done all he's got to do in the Eastern League. Uh, I was actually looking at this uh, when I did a prospect report. Um, for every rookie who's had an above three F WAR uh, in the last two to three years. Um, among the position players, only one of them had more than 80 games played in Double A. That was Randy Rosarena, who we all know was kind of a late blossomer, uh, was kind of stuck in the uh, Cardinal system for a little bit. The race trade for him, they immediately call him up. Um, Austin Wells already has 80 games in Double A. OPS well over 800, kills the baseball. Like, what is he doing there? You could have had a guy like that to maybe call up when Judge is out, but you don't right now. Um, look at the Reds. They call up Ellie De La Cruz. That's how you fill in for injuries. Um, you know, look at the Astros. They had injuries all over the place, and they used a lot of their farm system in their depth. What do the Rays do when a guy goes down? They call up someone from their system. What do the Dodgers do? Their entire pitching staff gets hurt. They call up Bobby Miller. Bobby Miller's throwing 99-mile-an-hour fastballs on the corner and dicing up the Yankees for six innings, right? Not saying there's a Bobby Miller in our system, but I'm just saying, Teams are moving towards fast tracking these guys to the major leagues. Why is a 23 year old left handed uh, bat who can hit the ball in the air sitting in double A? Right. So when your first depth is guy or career journeymen who aren't good at baseball, when Aaron Judge goes out or when Aaron Judge sits out a game or when Stan gets hurt or when Rizzo's out for a few games, you very much feel the impact because you have a bunch of low ceiling guys. So as the Yankees organization, you got to start looking, you know, when you get into the offseason, when you get to the trade deadline, these are the types of weeks where you're like, okay. We realize our big flaws that we don't have a lot of depth. Aaron Judge is going to come back, and Aaron Judge is going to be awesome, so we don't have to plan for a future without Aaron Judge. But we have to plan for the days we don't have Aaron Judge, number one, and we have to plan for the days where Aaron Judge isn't hitting well, number two. So, um, you know, overall, the depth's got to be better. Volpe's definitely got to be better, or else the Yankees are going to have a tough conversation about him. And the Yankees have to start letting these young guys, let them be the guys who fill in. Because, again, I, a lot of the guys I just mentioned in the bottom of the lineup are career bad hitters with low ceilings. So um, I don't know how you feel about that, but yeah, yesterday was apparent. Again, we're just back where we were last month, which is bad offense, no judge, and not a lot of baseball you want to watch. Yeah, it's going to be a tough uh, couple of weeks until he makes a return. But guys, I'd always love to hear your perspectives down below in the YouTube comments. Make sure to like and subscribe as always. We'll see if the Yankees play tonight because of the Canadian wildfires and all the smoke in the air and the unhealthy EPA. So we'll see what happens and if they do end up playing this game. Um, obviously, they have two more against the White Sox, so we'll be interesting to see how they kind of strategize around this. But always happy to hear your thoughts down below, as I said before. And we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode. Mm -hmm.